Good morning, welcome to our service today. And it's an important day today on a Christian's calendar. It's Palm Sunday. It's the beginning of our week-long celebration that typically would take place in most churches leading up to Easter, uh, Resurrection Sunday, of course, Good Friday this week, and so many other major events in the life of Jesus that we celebrate and remember. But it all starts today. Uh, I'm going to read to you as we begin our time together this morning from uh, John's Gospel, chapter 12. And this is the record, the biblical and historical record of where Palm Sunday, where we get that from and how we celebrate it. So just listen to what took place on this important day. It says that the next day, news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city and a large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, Praise God, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and he rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid, people of Israel. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. I pray today you will join us in some singing and celebration today in honoring our King, Jesus. Let's sing along, celebrating today. Hosanna, the King has come. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you.
Thank you, Lord. We welcome you here this morning on our service online, Lord, that you would be with each one that's joining us today. Bless them, I pray. Let us send your spirit among us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, good morning. Welcome to our first installment of our core kids' time. Normally on a Sunday, our kids get a chance to head downstairs in our church building and have a little lesson and some craft and some singing together. So this morning, it's just me. And me. And Olivia, my daughter, she's going to help me because I want all of the kids who are watching at home to follow along with us. I know how much you love making things and you're all super creative. So we're going to see who can create the best crown, me or Olivia. I think it's me. Probably will be you or it will be maybe someone at home. So I hope that you've got some craft supplies. Maybe you didn't know and you weren't ready for for to, to do this, but you can do it after the video or while the video is going. You want to pause it, mom and dad can go and get some supplies and then you can come back and join us. But we have some things ready. So what do we have here? Um, I, I think we have some paper, one blue, one orange, one orange. Orange? I'm going to make an orange crown. I'm going to make a blue one. All right. And if you have any color crown paper at home, you can make whatever color crown you like. The first step I need to do, and you can do, is to fold it because it's not going to be big enough to get all the way around my head. So I'm folding my paper. And Olivia failed right away. She folded it the wrong way. So you have to fold it this way because it's going to make it longer. That's okay. She can try again. Got it? All right, now we need some scissors to cut it on the fold. So if you're not used to using scissors, get a helper to help you so you don't cut yourself. But I'm gonna cut along the line. All right, ta-da, now, now we need to attach it. So we need something to attach our crown so that it goes all the way around. Maybe a tape. Maybe a stapler, some maybe some glue. glue, but we don't want glue to get in our hair, do we? All right. Let's try the glue. And then you will have a crown. I think mean, I think mean, it's more beautiful. Okay, but we're not done yet. It's not a full crown. Okay. Now, we need to add some... Decorations! Decorations. So I have a few decorations here. Um, markers. Oh, yes, we have markers. Stickers. Um, feathers. So anything that you want to add to your crown. Flowers. We have a bunch of stuff. All right, let's get busy decorating our crown. So keep working on your crafts, on your crowns. You can see me and Olivia have been busy. I've got some stickers on mine. I got some drawings and these very fashionable feathers mm. and Olivia's got some beautiful hearts on hers one of the things that is fun to imagine when you're a kid is what would it be like if you were the king or the queen for a day mm. Olivia what would be one of your rules of your kingdom Eating, oh, eating chocolate all day. Yes, that sounds like a great rule. And I'll have a bunch of pets. I thought you might say that. Mike, if I was the king, there would be no pets in my kingdom. And would I be an evil king or a good king? Evil. <laughs> 
What about you? If you were the king or the queen, what would be your rules in your kingdom? Maybe some of the moms and dads have their own ideas and they want to tell their kids if they would be a good king or a good queen or a bad king or queen. I think the kids should be the judge. And maybe the kids will be the judge. So have some fun with your crowns and show me your pictures. Send them in on Facebook or through email so we can have a look. Me and Olivia, we want to see your creations. Mostly me. And Olivia will show you hers at the end of the video when she's all done. Sing along with me. The words are on the back behind me. What a beautiful name, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name. What a powerful name. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. You're hidden. name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus and death could not hold the veil torn before you you silenced the boast of sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no rival you have no equal now and forever God you above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of So this morning, I want to offer you an opportunity today to bring to God your prayer needs, your prayer requests. We do this together as a family in our church services, but today, even through this online service, 
you can have that same privilege to bring God your cares and concerns. And some people might wonder, when we pray, does God truly hear us? Scripture is full of encouragement to tell us that he does. Let me just share with you from the book of Jeremiah. And this is a verse that is probably commonly shared online right now at this time. But listen to the rest of that verse, Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Today I want you to take a step of faith maybe and, and even just write down something that you'd like God to answer for you today in prayer. And hold that for the rest of this week, uh, maybe near your bed or in your Bible, tuck it away and remind yourself each day to that God will hear your prayer and expect Him to intervene. It may be in His timing, not when we'd like to see it done. It may be in His way, not in the way that we would like it to happen. But trust God that He hears your prayer and He is, he is planning and He has a future and a hope for you. So sing along with this beautiful hymn and then we'll, I'll lead you in a prayer together. So this morning, before we get a chance to go to God in prayer, and I want to encourage you, open up your hearts today. If you have a need in your life, you want to pray today for a friend, a loved one, someone else that's in need, let this song minister to you and open up our hearts before we get into that prayer time. What a friend we have in Jesus, an old hymn. Sing it along with me if you know it. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer and oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in trials and temptations is there trouble anywhere we should never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share Jesus knows our every weakness take it to the Lord in Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms, 
in his arms he'll take and shield thee you will find a solace there sing it again what a friend we have and what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God is Heavenly Father, I thank you today for each one that's listening, watching to this video service, God, and each one that has even written down or has on their hearts today a need that they're bringing to you in prayer. God, I thank you for your word today that encourages us and reminds us that you do hear us and that you're a loving Father, a loving God with great plans for us, plans to give us a hope and a future. Today, I pray that your spirit would minister today to those that are lonely, those that are hurting today, those that are in need today, those that are, that are battling thoughts of confusion or chaos today in their minds or in their spirits, oh God. I pray you would bring life and hope and joy and peace to our hearts. We give you thanks, oh God, for this day. We praise your name and we give you all the glory for what you have done in our lives and for what we expect that you will do, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you want to reach out to us throughout the next few weeks or even past that, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us, info at corechurch.ca. Send us your prayer requests, your prayer needs, and we would be glad to agree with you together in prayer. God bless. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free even when you're not at service. No cash, no checkbook, no problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. So as we already mentioned today, is Palm Sunday. And I wanted to share a few thoughts with you this morning uh, based on God's Word, beginning with the passage that we read when we opened up our service today. It's in John 12, where when Jesus was entering Jerusalem, it says that the people cried out, Hail to the King of Israel. Now it's important for us to understand the biblical context of the time. The Jewish people at that time were longing for a leader, a king that would rise up and reestablish them as a great nation, an earthly empire. They had many references to this even throughout the Old Testament. He was called a deliverer, a rescuer, a messiah. In fact, the Jewish people today are still waiting for that person to arrive. And so as a result, Jesus teaches and speaks as much or more about the kingdom of God than almost anything else in Scripture. He's trying to help them understand what God's kingdom is about and what it's not about. So when they cry out, Hail, King of Israel, it's a strange phrase because Jesus was never actually the king of a country, an empire, or any portion of land. And yet Christians, followers of Jesus, from that time until today, still refer to him as king. Now this thought leads us back full circle 
to the same question that first century people dealt with even then. It's that if Jesus is a king, what does his kingdom in fact look like? Now there's lots of scriptures to refer to on this topic. I just want to point you in a couple of places today that help us to understand and appreciate. The first one comes from Luke's gospel in chapter 17. This is the exact question we're talking about. It says in verse 20 that one day the Pharisees asked Jesus, when will the kingdom of God come? And Jesus replied, the kingdom of God can't be detected by visible signs. You won't be able to say that here it is or it's over there for the kingdom of God is already among you. One translation says the kingdom of God is within you. It's important that we understand here Jesus is making the point that it's, it's not a physical kingdom. The kingdom of God is made up of people who have surrendered their hearts and lives to Jesus, to his teachings, to following him and living the, in the way that would honor him. It's a group of people that's not confined by geographical boundaries. And they're not even confined by time. But across every nation and every era of history, those who follow after Jesus and endeavor to live the life just as he lived on earth, pleasing to God, are part of his kingdom. And that's why he could say that the kingdom of God is already among you. It's already within you. Some would refer to it as a kingdom of our hearts. So let me bring you to another portion of Scripture today, which perhaps has the most extensive teaching on the kingdom of God. It's found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. If you have your Bibles with you or your apps, you can uh, flip there now so that we can follow along together and hear the words of Jesus as he tries again to unpack some of the mysteries, the secrets of what is the kingdom of God. I'll start reading from verse 3 in Matthew 13. Jesus is telling a story, a parable here. He says, listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds, and as he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath. The birds came and ate them, and other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plants soon wilted under the hot sun. Since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. And still other seeds fell on fertile soil that produced a crop that was 30 60, even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Anyone, who, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Just pause for a moment there, but keep your place in that chapter because we're going to come back to this reading. The story is told here by Jesus of a farmer scattering seed and how it falls in four different types of soil, some of the seed falls on a footpath and some falls and just finds its ground in shallow soil. Others fall among thorns and finally among good ground, good soil. And, and of course, only one of those four types of soil produces any meaningful result, any meaningful harvest. Now you might ask, what does any of that have to do with the kingdom of God? Well, I want to show you that through, again, Jesus' own words, just skipping down a few verses to verse 18 in this same chapter. Follow along with me. He says, Now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds, which we just read. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message of the kingdom and they don't understand it. The evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. Let's read on. Verse 20. The seed of the rocky soil represents those who hear the message 
and immediately receive it with joy, but since they don't have deep roots, it doesn't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. Verse 22, the seed that fell among thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of life, the lure of wealth, and so no fruit is produced. Verse 23, the seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even a hundred times as much as had been planted. I love how scripture takes the time, the writer of Matthew's gospel, to explain to us what this parable is meant to teach us about the kingdom of God. And it says that the footpath, the soil that is first mentioned in the parable, represents those who hear the message of the kingdom but don't understand it. Maybe there might be someone like that today watching this video or maybe you've sat in a church service before, you've gone away asking yourself, I don't know if I really get it. What is this whole having faith in God about? Unfortunately, the seeds of the message of the kingdom of God, of God's word, of the love of Jesus, of all that we share about our faith, doesn't take root in that person's heart. They just don't understand what it means and how it applies to their lives. The only way to, to, to resolve that is to pray and ask God that their heart would be changed, that it would be good soil, and we'll get to that in a few moments. And then secondly, it mentions how some seed is planted on shallow soil. It's representative of those who hear the message of the kingdom and they immediately receive it with great joy, but their roots aren't deep enough to sustain it during the challenges and storms of life like we mentioned last Sunday. Maybe there's someone watching this service today online and, and you can say, that's me. I've heard about the love of Jesus, about forgiveness for my sins. I've heard about the message, the good news of, of the gospel. And it sounds exciting. I want to be a part of that. But then from one week to the next, life seems to turn you upside down and you don't have the deep roots that are needed to sustain you. The last third portion that we read about, the thorns, when seed is scattered and falls among thorns. It's those who hear the message of the kingdom, but all too quickly that message is crowded out and it's said right here, written for us plainly, by the worries of life and the lure of wealth. There are, there are many things in our lives that, that want to drown out that message of hope and message of, of love and joy and that comes from knowing Jesus. And it's sometimes very difficult for any of us to focus completely and to tune out all of those distractions to hear the voice of God, the voice of the Spirit that speaks to us within our hearts, telling us that this truly is the way to follow God, to surrender our lives to Him, to surrender our hearts to Him, that this Bible, as much as there's lots of things we don't maybe understand about it, that its words are true, that it's God's words to you, to, to me today. And so after describing these three failed attempts of, of scattering seed, we finally get to the good soil, the fertile ground, which is those who hear the message of the kingdom. And it even says here, the ones who truly hear it, who understand it, and it says it produces a harvest of 30, 60, 100 times what was planted. Here, I believe that Jesus is making a very important point. The, the message of the kingdom of God is not just about trying to rationalize and understand what it will be like, trying to get a picture of it in our minds only. No, he's saying it's meant to cause an effect 
in your lives for good. Your lives, after hearing and truly understanding the message of the kingdom, is meant to be changed. Our lives are different. Different in what ways? Well, again, there's many ways in Scripture that Jesus teaches us and describes to us what a life of the follower of Jesus is meant to be. Some of those things are described even just in our reading in Paul's writing about the fruit of the Spirit. We're meant to be loving and kind and forgiving, patient. And all of these things don't come overnight. Some of them, it takes us our entire lives to try to achieve any growth. And that's why it says in this passage in Matthew 13 that some, their lives yield a 30% increase, some it's 60, some it's 100 times. Their lives are so radically different because they've heard and understood the message of the kingdom. I want to encourage you this week that if you have some time, read through the rest of Matthew 13 because all of the parables that he, he teaches here, Jesus is teaching, helps us understand different elements of the kingdom of God. It's very powerful. And I pray that God would help you by His Spirit to, to grasp and understand what He's teaching and what He's sharing here in His Word. But let me finish up our time together this morning from God's Word by asking this reflective question. What type of soil best describes you today? When we ask in the early part of our, our, our time together today, we spoke about Jesus being the King of our lives, the King of our hearts. In John 12, people cried out, the King of Israel. Is He your King today? Are you a part of God's kingdom? Here on earth, we're talking about as well. Not necessarily about eternity, although the kingdom of God is an eternal kingdom that will reign forevermore. But the kingdom which we read from Luke's gospel is already here. It's within us if we hear and understand. I pray that that's you today. If you find yourself in one of those first three descriptions where the seed has been scattered and, and planted and spoken into your lives, but it just doesn't find that good ground, I pray that God would help you today to realize that and that you would reach out and ask Him, just like we read about in our time before we went to prayer. Ask God. He will hear your prayer. Ask Him today to make your heart a good ground, good soil, that your life could be changed. I want to also encourage you today, if you're watching or listening to this, and you have any questions about what it means to serve Jesus, to follow Him, why don't you contact us on, a, on our Facebook page or on our website. There's, there's many ways you can reach out. You can phone. And so some of those numbers are there for you and, and contact information. We can help one another out. And I want to pray for you and I want to encourage you and, and answer any questions that you may have. God's kingdom is a great kingdom. Being part of God's family is an incredible privilege. And so for those of us who have placed our faith and trust in Christ today, I pray that this word would encourage you and challenge you today. How good is the soil of your heart when you've heard and listened and been, and been taught God's word just like this morning? Is it making a change in your life, in my own life? Am I yielding the harvest? that I could for God 30 or 60 or 100 times. May God bless his word today and apply it to each one of our hearts. Shadow where I hide Be the ransom for my life
so we're at the end of our time together this morning. And uh, as you've seen earlier in the video, Olivia has finished her crown and yeah. I've finished mine. Hopefully some of the little friends watching have finished theirs at home. You know, the Bible does say when we get to heaven that we will receive rewards. I don't know if it will be a crown, maybe it will. But I also know that in Revelation it tells us uh, as John saw a vision of heaven, that there were elders with their crowns, and it says that they cast them at the feet of Jesus. You know why that is? It's because he is the only true king worthy to be called majesty. And today I pray that you have a blessed week. I pray that you stay healthy, safe, and your family, your friends continue to reach out to one another, encourage one another, and may God bless you. Bye-bye.